Hi, this is Beth. Today we're going to work on our wall pieces some more. First we're going to stitch the mountains and then we're going to finish stitching the sky. We're going to talk about a lot of little things. We'll also talk about a drawing that I'm going to run uh, to give away some items that I've made. So I'm getting ready to do some stitching on the mountains here. And uh, one thing to note is that it's harder to work on the center of your quilt because these sides are a little bit in the way and I don't have actually an extra wide throat on this industrial machine that I'm using. All seven and a half inches from there to the tip of my needle. That is not a wide throat, but it's what I use. I'm going to get rid of the stitching down as far as my paint goes because uh, if I do that then I can see what I can really get out of this design. But on the other hand I want to see how much overlap I have to work with so I am going to use my trusty white chalk. We're set up here. Got my got my chalked in overlap so that I can kind of tell what I've got going as I go and um, I'm going to stitch these mountains and I'm going to attempt to make them interesting. As always try to keep this nice and flat. So I'm hoping that my stitching uh, will be dark on here, so I'm going to start with black and I'm just going to sort of start in the middle and I usually just sort of stitch these mountains to kind of look like the way I think mountains look. So. Now my fabric is starting to pucker here, and so I didn't just keep going. I learned if that happens to uh, do something else and back off that area so that you can still control this. If this sticks up quite a bit on these mountains when it's stitched, it should look really still fine because we do want some visual texture uh, between the colors and the uh, fabric itself and the quilting so I but I don't want to let that happen too much so that it's just a big giant uh, pleat of fabric or a giant uh, ugly pucker I want it to be an artistic variation in the texture I really like how some of this uh, watercolory stuff looks. I don't so much like like that, although I don't think it's the end of the world. But you know, I may intentionally cover that, and so I might just... This is a little hard to see. I'm gonna get something else to mark that. Okay, so I've marked this area so that hopefully I'll just remember that there's stitching there that's not my favorite. And that it's probably, if I do the tree, which I think I'm gonna, um, I think people will enjoy the tree uh, trunk and just doing those two layers of fabric can be really nice. Um, I don't know if my trunk will cover that or not, but I probably will cover it already with this. So I'm still working off the same protocol that I introduced last time when we did the sky and the foreground and this time we're going to stitch the mountains and finish up the sky. In subsequent videos we'll be able to uh, finish the foreground, add uh, 
the interest elements, the tree and the fence going off into the distance. And then we'll wash the quilts and uh, trim off whatever ratty fray we have on the frayed edges of our, of our raw edges. And then we will block and trim the quilt, bind it, adding a sleeve, and finally we can embellish with anything that we think we need to still like the quilt. I don't try to make this too regular. I think variation in what you're doing is what uh, makes it look like actual nature. And so I try to, you know, do different things, put a little wiggle in your line sometimes, try to stitch some areas a little more densely than others. And I, I try to work fast. I, I know that it actually can be sort of an irritant to some people that I feel like sometimes to get in the zone, I have to go fast. And uh, that's what free motion quilting is. I, I always tell my customers that I've never liked to drive fast, but I like to quilt really fast. And um, so I usually just stitch these mountains just as fast as I can and kind of hope for the best. I'd love to hear from you guys about uh, how these instructions are working for you. It helps me uh, to know, you know, if things are easy to understand, if I'm, if I'm going over the same material too often, or if you prefer to have a little refresher on each topic in case you don't remember a video from before and you don't want to watch the whole thing. Uh, please just keep in touch and let me know how it's going. I do uh, stitch the whole thing pretty densely and I don't like to leave areas that are too big that are unquilted. And I may even come back, you know, if I really thought I needed some dark stuff in here to light these mountains, I could come back with some black satin stitching and uh, put some satin stitched lines in here. And I think I might do that with this because I think I really want some dark stuff going on there. But um, we'll see. If I don't think it needs it, I won't do it. I, I don't uh, go with the idea that I just need to add as much as I can and completely gild the lily. You know, if I like it and I visually think it's got enough power, uh, I tend to leave that part alone. Uh, unless there's just something that's, you know, my trademark move that I really have to do. Like I always bead the single trees, uh, whether they need it or not. Also, I don't really have a plan for what's going to come next in terms of a big project after this one. I know that I do want to do three gift projects very soon because I've been uh, saying on my website that I'll do that for folks and we're going to start with an apron, but then I don't know uh, what we'll do for the next series where we take on a big project. And so if you've seen something that I've been doing and you're interested, please let me know and I'll take that into consideration. Painted fabric uh, does not really uh, fray when you wash it too much at all. Uh, a little bit here is white, which I'm fine with, uh, but I wouldn't want a white line all the way across the top of the mountains. And with these kinds of things, I try not to make them too smooth. I usually like there to be a little bit of sharp. Edge, a little edginess to it. And I sometimes like the way it looks. If I do go ahead and whip these things a little bit and there's what my mountains look like. I think I'm gonna use this Taylor's chalk and I think I'm just gonna kind of decide how I want my mountains in the back to be. This is really a different skyline than I've done in the past and so I'm not positive how I want to do this. I think maybe I'll just
just go across the back, not, probably not quite that straight, go across the back there, maybe I'll kind of give myself a mountain over here, and then something like this. I usually have more of a distinct uh, skyline. As I'm doing this, I'm thinking ahead of a couple things. One is, uh, you know, how I'm going to maximize what, like in this instance, is not very much fabric. I tried to show some of it by cutting out into these other parts, and that'll be nice, but I don't want this to be a straight line across here, so I won't finish it off that way. And then I'm also thinking about, you know, any problems I see. Uh, what I what I would do. It's tempting to want to add more fabric because I usually work with more layers. But with a regular sewing machine, you really don't want to build up too high. And so that's why I'm not doing anything like the layers that I normally do. So I'll just start over here, and I'm going to do a really quick test of my. This seems like a good time to mention that the mini landscape project will be on the website within a day or two of the publication of this video and there you can find the simplified instructions for the 12 by 12 version of this landscape. When this is finished I'll add a printable uh, PDF to my website that lists out as many of the steps and tips and things for the raw edge uh, while hanging quilting that I can uh, round up for you. I actually had a plan of how I was going to stitch that and I <laughs> did something completely different when it came time. Which is fine with me usually because I think we need to let both sides of our brain call the shots when we're making art for sure. So we'll see. I'm not positive <laughs> how I'm going to like this. I might want to make that taller, but seems like a good time to tell you about the drawing that I want to do. I'm trying to get viewers to send me pictures of projects that they've done, and so as an incentive I've put together uh, two prizes. Basically the idea is if you send me one or more pictures of your viewer project, I will put your name in a drawing. It's not a contest in the sense that I'm going to be judging whose project is the best, but if you send me projects to put on the website, I'll put you in the drawing and I would love it if some of you would participate. And those of you who have already sent me pictures, I will put your name in the drawing. I wanted to take a second to remind you guys that you're all sewing at different levels. You all have different interests. And I know that I can't be all things to all people. On the other hand, I need to do my best to keep the people that are starting out busy and having something to do and the people that are more accomplished intermediate sewers, I want to help inspire them uh, to keep going. The people that are very advanced, I think they'll, they'll find something to do anyway, so I'm not so interested in uh, making sure that they're interested, you know, they can they can hunt around for things that they may or may not want to learn about. <laughs> I'm not sure those are the most inspired mountains in the world, but then again, uh, they're already kind of rough them up a little and 
see what will come off in the wash. That'll get trimmed later after I do the washing. I think all I'm going to do is kind of echo quilt here and then trim this out. And uh, then I'm just going to stitch out the white with something very contrasty. I'm just going to stitch this out too with the brown. I'm going to keep working. Now that the website is finally redone, I'm discovering some different features that I can add that may be helpful to some people. You can go into the giant images that I'm putting into some of the posts and by clicking twice it gets really big. The wall hanging gets quite a bit larger than your computer screen and then you can scroll around and see in detail different parts of the wall hanging and different the stitching and just very close up detail the way you could see if you saw my work in person. My work tends to be very detailed, and so uh, probably I would stitch in these, at least the bigger ones. And remember that when you stitch really close to it, like I did here, where I actually stitched over it a tiny bit, that's going to fray up and probably break loose from it. And if it doesn't on its own, when I go do my trimming, I will. And so when this all pushes back, you're going to be able to see that. And so there are a number of these that I would probably stitch in that I'm not going to do on camera. And I don't know, you know, I might stitch in this normally. I don't think I'll do it today. Uh, I, I want to get this edited and get this posted. And you probably notice that I don't like to just do, you know, one line in and one line out. I like to get areas where there are more than the two lines and so I work on you know what what little pathway that you make for yourself uh, creates what kind of a feeling I do think if you just do two it's it can be very nice it's just that when you vary the thickness of your area and your stitching the way that I've done here, I think it has a more organic, natural feel. And even though I don't want my landscape to be literal, I, I do want it to be organic feeling. And by organic, I mean, you know, something from nature. Really, I can do anything in here. Um, I've got a lot of lines, and so I almost think it's time to do some kind of curly cues. This week I posted on the blog a project to do Tiki Torch Planters, which is something we did this summer, and it turned out really fun, and so I did a post on that. And I'll be putting the quilt, mini quilt post on in a couple days. Um, I'm looking forward to doing some upcycling and having more in-depth information for the quilting and sewing uh, for the YouTube videos. And I, you know, I'm a full disclosure person. I don't want to spam anybody. On the other hand, uh, I really appreciate those of you that have signed up for the blog. I need your support and I appreciate it. And I'll make it as easy as possible for you to determine you know, interested, not interested, interested. I'm planning to do the blog for a year and see if we can, uh, you know, have a lot of fun with it and have it be worthwhile or not. And uh, I'll, I've always, I'll always regret if I don't try, I think. So uh, there's that. In the writing life, Annie Dillard one of my favorite writers says, one of the things I know about writing is this, spend it all, shoot it, play it, lose it, all, right away, every time. Do not hoard what seems good for a later piece in the book or for another book. She goes on, these things fill from behind, from beneath, like well water.
Similarly, the impulse to keep to yourself what you have learned is not only shameful, it is destructive. Anything you do not give freely and abundantly becomes lost to you. You open your safe and find ashes. Don't save it for the next quilt. Put it in this one. <laughs>